Hello everyone. In the last session, we looked into method of characteristics where it was solved certain partial differential equations which are dependent upon space and time using ordinary differential equations. Now today, we are going to look into the seventh chapter where we will discuss about simulation of groundwater flow first of all let's say this is the ground and at a certain depth from the ground let's say this is an aquifer where you have water this section here will have soil all around it so from the aquifer let's say water is flowing in this direction like this and let's say at the end the flow stops at a certain barrier here if we take this section out we can assume this flow to be 1d which means it will be kind of like a pipe where the water flow will only take from the left hand side to the right hand side this will have several grids where the fluid will enter from here and move into this grid and then from here to this grid from here to this one and so on until it hits the barrier now these conditions here at the ends are the boundary conditions or what you can do is you can consider this flow to be two directional you will have certain blocks or grid blocks where the water can flow from here to here here to here here to here here to here so two directional flow can occur in both x and y direction whereas 1d flow will occur in only one direction and to make it more complex like we did in FEM you can consider the blocks to be 3d as well where the water can go in any direction now you can see here that each of these blocks are related to each other therefore each of these grids will have certain relation to each other which will generate different equations which will be coupled coupled means they are interconnected to each other these coupled equations if we discretize will give us several linear equations which we have to solve them simultaneously like we saw in FEM like if you have a structure like this and the more the nodes you have more accurate would be the solution similarly here the more grids you have the more accurate is your solution for example in here we have five number of grid blocks now if you make it half like this now we have 10 blocks the solution that you'll obtain from 10 blocks will be more accurate than that from the five blocks however this also increases our computational time the groundwater flow will be based on partial differential equations now these PDEs will be related to time and space the continuity equation for the incompressible flow will be du by dx plus dv by dy plus dw by dz equals to zero 
now if you look at Darcy's law u equals to permeability times dh which is change in head and v will be given by and w will be given by and we put a negative sign in front because the water will flow from larger head to the smaller head and this k here which is the permeability is given by t by h where t is the transmissivity and h is the thickness or depth of the aquifer now here transmissivity is related to how much fluid passes through the grid in the analysis of the water flow we generally use the fundamental equation which is the conservation of mass so the inflow minus outflow will always be equal to change in the storage this is our fundamental equation that we use here if you look at the Darcy's equation and you substitute these values back here what you'll get will look something like this now this case here we're assuming kx the permeability in the x direction equals to permeability in the y direction equals to permeability in the z direction so here actually this would be kx this would be ky this would be kz in different directions now we assume that these three permeabilities are same which equals to k and we can take the common out and make it zero now if we take all three equations then it will be a 3d problem if we take only two equations in the x and y direction this would be a 2d flow and if we take only one direction let's say the x direction then it will be a 1d problem now what we do here is that we have this continuous partial differential equation and to solve this analytically takes way longer time and some of them may not even be solved therefore what we do here is we have this equation right we discretize it into some algebraic equations which will be easier and faster to solve even when you have a 1d problem like this where water flows in the x direction you may get millions or even billions of equations to solve depending upon the length and the grid spacing but what you'll get is for a 1d problem you will be able to write your solution in matrix form like this where this matrix here let's say the values are r11 r12 these values here will generally be zero so this kind of matrix is known as tri diagonal matrix here you can see that the values which are away from the principal diagonal will be zero therefore to solve them we generally store only these values here in the computer and these zeros are not stored and this vector here will be the vector of unknowns these are the values you may have to solve they may be depth of the water or pressure 
and so on let us say these are h1 h2 and so on and the right hand matrix will be the matrix of constants they will have some value here let it be b1 b2 and so on so your matrix form of the linear equations which approximate the partial differential equation in 1d will look something like this and you have to solve for these values here now to solve this kind of system we may either use our Gaussian elimination method in chapter 2 or we have Gauss Jordan method or some other ways the other way to solve this kind of problem we can use some simulators or softwares which are similar to the ones that you often use in structure such as SAP 2000, ETABS, ANSYS or Abacus some of the popular ones CMG and Eclipse which are used to simulate the groundwater flow Abacus can also be used to obtain the flow nets under the dam and so on you have to be very confident in your modeling you must have the fundamental knowledge to observe if the results that your program is giving you are correct and you should be able to find and detect where the errors are coming from in your model let's look at Darcy's equation again which is the fundamental equation for ground flow simulation so we have our Darcy's equation let's look at the 2d flow first and then we look into the 1d flow now for this case what I have to do is we have to take only 2d equation from the Darcy's law therefore what we'll get here will be so let's make our grids like we did in FDM so what we'll have here is we'll have a grid like this now in this case what we assume is the water flows from here to here straight in the x direction and downward in the y direction here also let's take this grid here the center one and let's name this grid block as M this as N O and P you can see here that the water inflows from M to this grid here let's say this is grid R we are concerned about and let us say that this distance here is delta X I minus 1 this is delta X I delta I plus 1 this is in the Y direction in this area you can see that the water inflows from M and from O and the water outflows to N and to P and let's say from this grid block we are taking out some water at a rate of QR which is and let's say some water stays here and this is the storage now if we look into our equation of mass conservation which states that the inflow minus outflow must be equal to rate of change of storage so for this case here orange grid block the inflow let's say this is q inflow minus q outflow equals to rate of change of storage now this rate of change of storage is given by s times d phi by dt where s is known as storivity or storage coefficient 
and d phi by dt is the rate of change of potential head per unit time. Now our q in will be given by q m. Let's say this is q m and this is q o. This is q n and this is q p. q m plus Q O and outflow will be given by Q N plus Q P equals to S D phi by D T and we do have one another term here which is Q R which is related to our outflow we can add that up plus Q R but we have to multiply this by our area which is delta X I delta Y I for our orange grid or orange grid block. Now if you write this in terms of Q which is the flow per area this is also known as Darcy's velocity or flusk then what will happen is that your Q will be given by Q times area. Therefore we can write our QM in terms of small q, qm plus qo times delta xi, delta yi minus qn plus qp plus qr into delta xi delta yi equals to s d phi by dt. Again, from Darcy's law, this q is also given by minus th d phi by dx where t is the transmissibility coefficient and h is the depth of the aquifer and d phi by dx is the slope of the potential. Therefore our small q will be given by q by area which will be equal to minus th by delta xi delta yi times d phi by dx. Now let's look at this grid here. What we have there is, now if you look here, our small qn for this flow will be given by minus t h h is the depth of the aquifer so for this case it is delta y i so delta y i divided by delta x i delta y i times d phi by dx let's say the potential here is given by plus one and the potential here is given by phi i therefore the difference d phi will be equal to phi i minus phi i plus 1 and dx which will be the distance between center to center will be given by as you see here this is delta x i by 2 this is delta x i plus 1 by 2 so this whole length will be dx that is approximated by delta x i by 2 plus delta x i plus 1 by 2 therefore this is approximated by delta x i plus delta x i plus 1 by 2 we can substitute these values and write here so what you get here is which equals to minus 2 t divided by we can cancel this one out delta x i delta x i plus delta x i plus 1 times phi i minus phi i plus 1. We can take this negative sign inside and write 2t. Now this term here we can write as since this is for qn nij. So our small qn will be given by ni phi i plus 1 minus phi i. Now you see you can get your qn which will be equal to nij 
phi i plus 1 minus phi i. Similarly, you can get your qm, qo and qp. Now, we have our qm, qo and qp. And here we have our qn. Now, if we substitute these values back to this equation, what we'll get will look something like this. Now, what you can do here is we can rearrange this. So, we can take phi ij common from each of these equations. Then, what we'll have is now we can denote all of this part as one variable, say qij. So, qij phi ij minus now if we consider that our delta xi equals to delta yi equals to certain value delta x then this equation here will become our nij will be equal to t by delta x square Therefore, what you can do here is, in this case, if we consider delta xi equals to delta yi equals to delta x, then these values here, mij, oij, nij, and pij will all be equal to t by delta x square. And this qij, which is the summation of all of these, will become 4t by delta x squared. Therefore, what you can write here is, now if you have a steady flow, which means that your storage factor will be equal to 0, then this term will become 0, and what we'll end up with will look something like this. Again, when you consider the withdrawal, to be equals to zero so there is no withdrawal then so you can see here that the potential head phi ij is the average of the potential heads of the neighboring grid blocks so if you have to find potential head at grid ij which will be this one then you have to get your potential head at these locations say phi a phi b phi c and phi d and you have to find phi then this will be equal to summation of your phi's of the neighboring areas divided by 4 which will be the average of it i may have to do a correction here as you can see this equation here the main equation that we started with you see on the right hand side the units for this one is meter per second and this is dimensionless therefore we are using a wrong formulation here this should be divided by area in and area out now this one here will be divided by area divided by area divided by area divided by area and now your small q is given by your flow divided by area which is known as Darcy's velocity or Darcy's flusk and when you go here you won't have these terms here and then so these terms will be out so what we'll get here on the right hand side will be this equation we won't have this term here therefore when you go down, you won't have this term as well. And then your phi will be equal to this. Now let's move into one dimensional implicit problem for underground flow. As I have already mentioned earlier in the previous sessions, that implicit 
means that you'll have some equations which will be coupled and you have to solve them simultaneously what it means is that if you have an aquifer and you have water flowing from here to here and what you do is you divide this section into different grid blocks now here let's say this is grid block 0 grid block 1 2 3 and 4 and we can have our potential head at this point be phi 0 phi 1 phi 2 phi 3 phi 4 now to find these potential heads we have to form a system in which each of these values depends on each other and you'll have to solve them in a matrix form let's just take three grids out of it so we will have water flowing in these three grid blocks so let's say this is grid i minus one this is i this is i plus one and you have water flowing from here like this and let's say the potential head at this point is phi i minus one phi i phi i plus one and we can assume that this grid has a length of delta x i minus one delta x i delta x i plus one we can name this one as m this one o and this one n we'll use our main equation which is q m which is the inflow minus q n which is the outflow and we can say that we have some kind of withdrawal that is q r so minus q r these two are the outflows this is the inflow equals to rate of change of storage so here you will have s d phi by dt so for your qm you can go back here and you can see that your q in here has this kind of formulation so what you can write here you can just take this qn down for qm it will be equal to 2t divided by delta xi into delta xi plus delta xi minus 1 phi i minus phi i minus 1 and for qn it will be equal to 2t by delta x i delta x i plus 1 plus delta x i times phi i plus 1 minus phi i and you can take the qr to the right hand side then what you'll get here would be s d phi by dt plus qr if we assume that our delta x i equals to delta x i minus 1 equals to delta x i plus 1 equals to delta x which means that they have a constant length then these values reduce to 2t by 2 delta x square phi i minus phi i minus 1 minus 2t divided by 2 delta x square phi i plus 1 minus phi i equals to s d phi by dt plus qr 
and then you can write now as you can see here this phi here is a partial derivative of time so we can approximate this as phi ith grid in space j minus 1 time minus phi ith grid at z time divided by delta t so here we are varying time here but we are keeping the grid block same so don't get confused with d phi by dx here and d phi by dt here this is spatial derivative this is time derivative at this time we are looking at time t equals to j so we can write here j if you like j j and this one we have to find phi i j in the current state and here this value here is during the previous time or at the end of previous time step so this will be given or known therefore this ij to the left hand side so what we'll get will look something like now if you assume qr to be 0 then this equation will become now here let's look at this grid and this grid let's say this is i equals to 0 this is i equals to 1 and we'll have a boundary condition given here if we put i equals to 0 i equals to 0 what we'll get is I'll just leave the j here let's say this is minus 1 this one here corresponds to an imaginary block here which is i equals to minus 1 so this is the boundary condition which will be given therefore in many cases you will be given phi minus 1 if you write this equation like this minus t by delta x square phi minus 1 you'll know this value here and you'll know this value here so this will be our equation 1 now again let's say we have another grid this is i equals to 2 and then we'll have a boundary condition here as well which is the right hand side boundary condition now if we put i equals to 1 for this grid block what we'll get will be which will be equation 2 we can assume t by delta x square as eta so when you do this and plug in i equals to 2 what you'll get is t by delta x square which will be eta now phi 1 minus 2 eta plus s by delta t phi 2 plus eta phi 3 equals to minus s phi 2 minus 1 divided by delta t this phi 3 will correspond to an imaginary block right at this end here and this one will also be given what you can do is you can take this one to the right hand side and write another equation phi 3 and these values you'll know if you write this equation in matrix form what you'll get is so here what we have to find is phi 0 phi 1 and phi 2 for the three grids and for the first equation where we put i equals to 0 the equation becomes this so this is 2 eta plus 
s divided by delta t phi naught plus eta phi 1 equals to minus s phi naught minus 1 delta t minus eta phi minus 1. So you can write this down. So what you'll get here is, I'll write it here and in the second one where i equals to 1 what you'll get is now for the third one what you'll get here is for i equals 2 there won't be i equals to 0 therefore this will be 0 and then we have eta and then minus 2 eta plus s divided by delta t and here we'll have minus s phi 2 minus 1 divided by delta t minus eta phi 3. So these are our linear equations which are coupled to each other which means that in each equation you will have previous and the next term in the spatial dimension and to solve it you have to find inverse of this matrix and multiply it to the right hand side. So this equation here will be will be clear when you look at an example problem so let's do an example problem let's say we have an aquifer like this and at this end we have a constant head which is phi l and this equals to 200 meters if we have a river here like this then this will be known as river stage and let's say we have water flowing in the aquifer like this to a certain distance and here we'll have a right end barrier like this let's assume the length of aquifer is 600 meters let's say the problem says that you solve this by taking delta x equals to 100 meters and delta t equals to one day and you will be given the value of t which is the transmissivity of the aquifer as 0.04 meter per second and storage coefficient s may be given as 0 0.015 what you'll do now is you'll take this and form a grid you start from this end let's form a grid like this it says delta x equals 100 so we'll have 100 200 3 4 5 and 6 so this will be our grid 0 grid 1 grid 2 grid 3 grid 4 grid 5 and delta x will be 100 for each of them so this will be delta x as I mentioned before we have to assume an imaginary boundary condition here and here for this case this is minus 1 grid so your phi minus 1 is given as 200 meters which is equal to this one and for the right hand side if there's a barrier then it will have no flow occurring here if this imaginary grid block is named as 6 so s6 will be equal to h5 since there is no flow we are also given the head in the previous time step which are for this one in the previous time step which is phi 0 j minus 1 this one here is given as 98.2 meters and this one is given as and this one I'll write it here this one is given as 98.1 this one as 98.5 98.6 and 98.7 now what we have to do is we have to find our eta which equals to t by delta x square. So t here is 0 0.04 in meter per second 
and our delta x is 100 still be like this so you'll get your value here and then we can directly find our s by delta t which you have to determine here here as well as here so you can just get our s by delta t in this condition s is same for each of the grids so s by delta t will be equal to 0 0.015 divided by delta t you can either write this in number of days or meter per second if you have found t in meter per second then you have to translate one day into seconds that will be 0 0.015 divided by 86400 seconds and then you'll obtain your s by delta t as well and now what you have to do is you have to form the matrix now what will happen is that to form a matrix since there are six number of grids you'll have 50 51 52 53 54 and 55 and this one will be your matrix so this matrix will look something like this but you'll have extra terms here let's say this is r5 which will be equal to some values here and then you solve for your phi since this is a lengthy equation you may not be asked to solve for phi's but you may be asked to find the coefficients of this matrix and this matrix here now what i'll do is i'll go to excel and solve this problem now this is our problem we are going to solve so let's write down the parameters here so we'll have delta x given as 100 meters and then we have delta t which equals to one day that equals to 86400 seconds and then we are given our transmissivity t that equals to 0 0.04 meter per second and then our storage coefficient or storivity as 0 0.015 and we are also given phi 0 at time minus 1 and then phi 1 at time minus 1 7 meters these are our given values now we have to find our eta which equals to t divided by delta x square delta x square so this will be our eta and then we have to find s divided by delta t and this will be equal to this divided by time in seconds this is our s divided by delta t and then we have to find our coefficients here so for the first row what you'll have is minus 2 times eta plus s divided by delta t which is this one so this is our first term and then we have eta here this will be 0 this will be 0 this will be 0 this is grid block number 0 1 2 3 4 and then 5 and for this one it will be like this so this will be equal to eta which is this one this will be equal to this one here this will be equal to eta again which is this one and then 0 0 0 for this one it will be 0 and then it will be just these values here so this will be equal to this one and then these values 0 0 for this one again it will be 0 0 and these values again so equals to this one 0 here and here also it will be 0 0 0 sorry this will be equal to this one 
and for this one it will be 0, 0, 0 and 0 again and then eta which is this one and then we have this one here these are our grid block numbers and this is our values of the matrix and then in the right hand side we have these values here so this will be equal to minus s divided by delta times 5 minus 1 which is the boundary condition that we are given I haven't written it down so I'll write it here I'll write it somewhere here so I'll just click on this one and I'll put here our boundary condition phi minus 1 or we can write phi L this equals to 200 meters so this equation will become this one and then here you'll just have minus s divided by delta times this value here so this will be for these all values and then for this one s by delta t times this one minus eta which is this one times phi 3 which is the right hand side condition in this condition this eta will be equals to 0 so I can just leave this one out enter I'll just name it as R matrix and this one as B matrix on the right hand side we can solve this if you want to our solution will be equals to M multiply M inverse this matrix times this one so these are our values here so this will be in meters so this is how you obtain your potential heads at different locations so here we have our solution which are these values here in your examination you may be given a problem like this but the matrix may be only 3 by 3 matrix so you can solve it using maybe the Gauss elimination method or Gauss Jordan method or maybe just your calculator so this is all about chapter 7 which is the simulation of the groundwater flow if I have time later on I'll show how to draw float nets under a dam in abacus which is kind of 2d simulation of groundwater flow where you can see the flow nets. So today we looked into simulation of groundwater flow and we did a numerical here. In my next session I will do chapter 4 where we will study about finite element analysis of rods, beams, trusses, frames and 2D plates. Thank you for watching till the end. Hope you like this video. And see you next time.